I'm going to show you another science GCSE required practical, this time for physics, and we're going to verify Newton's second law, that is F equals MA, or force equals mass times acceleration. And we're going to be doing that with a track, a trolley, and that trolley is going to be accelerated by some masses that are hanging over this pulley connected to the trolley with a piece of string. So first things first, how do we find out the force that is accelerating the trolley? Well, we need to look at our masses. Now you don't need to use big masses for this. Don't use 100 gram masses. You only need to use small masses like these. These are 10 grams each. The hanger itself is 10 grams as well. Now 100 grams on earth has a weight force of gravity of 0.98 newtons. For the sake of simplicity, let's just call that one. So if 100 grams has a weight of one newton, 10 grams will have a weight of 0.1 newtons. So every one of these is gonna result in 0.1 newtons of force accelerating the trolley. Now you might have an air track, which has a sort of trolley riding on a cushion of air. It's kind of like an air hockey table. That means that you get very little friction, but this trolley here has been made to be pretty frictionless. So we can assume that there's no friction. There is going to be a bit, but we'll talk about that later. So what we're going to do is change the force that is accelerating the trolley. And then we're going to measure the acceleration with these different forces. That will allow us to calculate the mass, and that should be the same as the mass of the trolley. The question is, how do we measure acceleration of the trolley? Now, there's three different ways of doing that. I'm gonna show you the most straightforward way first, and that's using a data logger, like my little Einstein tablet here, connected to a couple of photo gates or light gates. Now, because a photo gate can measure time, if you tell the data logger the width of the flag, it can do distance divided by time to get the speed going through the first photo gate and then the second. Now the data logger does the calculation automatically of change in speed divided by time to get the acceleration. Now what I'm gonna do is start off with 100 grams. That's 10 lots of 10 grams. I'm gonna put that on the end of my string. So it doesn't matter how far apart your two photo gates are because the Einstein is just measuring the time it takes to go between one and the other. Distance doesn't affect it. But it's a good idea to have them fairly far apart. You also wanna make sure that your string is just long enough so your trolley goes through the second photo gate before the masses hit the floor. And the masses hit the floor just there, so it's gone through. If it was too long, then that means that the masses would hit the floor before it goes through the second photo gate and it's already stopped accelerating, which you don't want. Okay, so I'm ready to begin. I've put my flag width, which is 5.3 centimeters, into my data logger here. And we're gonna press start and then let our trolley go and see what acceleration it gives us. Here we go. And we've got an acceleration of 1.263 meters per second squared. As per usual, it's more reliable if you do repeat reading. So we're gonna do it two more times for 100 grams. Second time. This time we have 1.253 meters per second squared. And the third time. That gave us 1.257 meters per second squared. Taking a mean average of those three results, we end up with an average acceleration of 1.258 meters per second squared. And that is for one Newton of force. Now we're going to remove some of the masses from our hanger. Now you can remove 10 grams if you want. I'm gonna remove 20, so altogether we'll end up with five different readings. You can get more readings if you want to get more reliable results. Now the thing is that one Newton of force wasn't only accelerating the trolley, it was also accelerating the masses themselves. So when we take 20 grams off, we not only need to take them off the hanger, we then need to put them on the trolley itself to make sure that the overall mass is staying constant. Now that I've done that, I have 80 grams over here, so that means that we have an accelerating force of 0.8 newtons. Now, if you don't have a setup with two photo gates where the acceleration is calculated for you, you can do it with one photo gate. You can calculate acceleration by taking the speed at which it goes through the photo gate with squared divided by two times the distance from the beginning to the photo gate. So in symbol form, that's A equals V squared 
over 2s, where v is the speed and s is the distance that is travelled. Just make sure you measure from where the middle of the flag starts each time to where the photo gate is. If you don't have a photo gate, you can actually just calculate acceleration using time as well. If you have a stop clock, you can just time how long it takes to travel a certain distance. That way you can calculate acceleration by doing two times the distance divided by the time squared. That's 2s over t squared. Don't forget that when you take your measurements though, it needs to be in meters not centimeters. Otherwise, you won't end up with an acceleration of meters per second squared. So it doesn't matter which of these three ways you use to get your acceleration. So long as you have your accelerations for different forces, you then want to make a graph. We're gonna have force on the y-axis and acceleration on the x-axis. Now, you might be told that it's always the independent variable that goes on the x-axis, but in physics, we put the variables on the axes that makes most sense. And in this case, it's F against A. As you can see from my results, it looks like I have a linear relationship. And if I draw a straight line of best fit, I can find the gradient of that line by making a right angle triangle and doing the height of the triangle in Newtons divided by the width of the triangle in meters per second squared. For me, that ends up being 0.766. Now, according to Newton's second law, F equals MA. So rearranging that to get force divided by acceleration, that gives us mass. So we should find that the trolley and the masses that I use in the experiment have a mass of 0.766 kilograms. Let's see if that's true. Now my balance is giving us a mass of 707 grams. That's fairly close to our 766 grams that we calculated from the gradient on our graph. They are going to be slightly different though. And you would hope your number from your graph to be slightly bigger than the actual mass. Now, why is that? Because there is going to be a little bit of friction and a little bit of air resistance maybe with our trolley. That means that it seems like the trolley weighs more than it actually does. 